Well, howdy. This is another video on mathematical logic. We're on section 4.3, tautological implications and tautological equivalency. Let's get started. What is a tautology? Let's review. A molecular sentence is a tautology if and only if it is always true, regardless of the truth values its atomic sentences have. Now, those atomic sentences, they can be true or false. Regardless, with any possible truth functional relation, the molecular sentence will always get the truth value of being true. Always, always, always. And that's what makes it tautology. It cannot be false. For example, P or not P is a tautology, as will be true no matter if P is true or false. If P is true, then the disjunction is true, because at least one option in the disjunction must be true in order for it to be true. Now, if P is false, not P is true, and so the disjunction is still true, and P can only be true or false. There are only two possibilities, and both of those possibilities end up at a true molecular sentence. Therefore, it is indeed a tautology. Let's review what is a good argument. Remember, with true premises and a valid argument, we always get a true conclusion. With those conditions, true premises, valid argument, the conclusion is guaranteed to be true. And here is where a tautological implication comes into play. Maybe a little confusing at first, but in the next few slides, I have a lot of examples, and those should help clarify things. Now, let's say we have a good argument. Now, with such a good argument, it can be written as an implication. If x, then y, or put differently, x implies y, where x, the antecedent, basically contains the premises of the argument. And it puts those premises in a conjunctive relation. And the consequent, or y, is the conclusion. So the entire argument, premises, and the conclusion is put into one big molecular sentence. X implies Y could only be a good argument if it is a tautology. Otherwise, it's actually invalid. Maybe we can think of it this way. Again, the entire argument is put into one sentence, namely, X implies Y. Now, its atomic sentences can be true or they can be false, right? Now, given all possible combinations, if that conditional sentence is always true, it must be a valid argument. Whatever the atomic sentence's value, we end up with something true, right? Conversely, let's say we get something false. We get a false value. So the sentence X implies Y, we get something that's false. That must mean the argument doesn't always work. There must be something wrong with the argument. It must be invalid. And that's the basic idea here. So we can take an argument and put in one sentence. So thus, any valid inference can be expressed as a tautological implication. And a few examples I think will help. So let's get started. So here we have an example. I use the conjunction rule. The first premise is A, the second premise is B, and then we conclude, therefore, A and B. So our goal is to make a tautological implication and then to do a truth table and find out if it always ends up as having the value of being true. If it does, it's a tautology, and we can thereby conclude it's a good argument. If it's not a tautology, if we have one false value, then we can throw out the argument. It must be bad. There's something wrong with it. It's invalid. So how do we make a tautological implication? Step one, we connect all premises with the conjunctive sentential. So our first premise we have is A. Second premise is B. So they show up here, A, B, and then we relate them with the AND, so A and B. Step two, we place the work of step one as the antecedent of a conditional. And that's what I did. So this is the antecedent of a conditional. And then step three, 
we place the conclusion as a consequent of the conditional. That happens to be A and B, and it shows up right here. So we have if parentheses A and B, close parentheses, then parentheses A and B, close parentheses. Just looking at it, you would have to say that has to be a tautology. There's no way that can be false. But let's make sure of that and look at our truth table. So I already did that. We start out, of course, with our atomic sentences A and B. There are four possibilities here. And when we construct the table, we will end up here. So this sentence, if A and B, then A and B, is always true. It is a tautology, so it's a good argument. Our next example is modus ponens. In fact, modus ponens will never let you down. Modus ponens will never go wrong. Indeed, modus ponens is always valid. And here's the argument. First premise, if P then Q. Second premise, P. Conclusion, therefore Q. Let's express this as a tautological implication. We have our first premise, if P then Q, our second premise, P. We place them in a conjunctive relationship, in an and relationship. Now these premises appear as the antecedent to a conditional, and the conclusion appears as a consequent of this conditional. Now we can do a truth table of this tautological implication. And I did that, of course. Down here, we have the atomic sentence P, atomic sentence Q, we do the truth table, four possibilities, and we get the outcome that's always true. This is always valid. That's why I say modus ponens will never let you down. We've had successful example after successful example. How about a failure? Now the fallacy of denying the antecedent is definitely a failure. In fact, the fallacy of denying the antecedent will always let you down. We have the first premise, if P then Q. Second premise, not P. We conclude, therefore, not Q. We construct our tautological implication, or our so-called tautological implication. We have the premise, if P then Q, the premise not P. We put them in a conjunction, and this conjunction is the antecedent to a conditional. And then the conclusion, not Q, we make the consequent of that conditional. And then we construct our truth table. We have the atomic sentence P, atomic sentence Q. There are four possibilities. And then it turns out, once we fill in that truth table, we do not have a tautology. There's a false value here. So it is invalid. In fact, the fallacy of denying the antecedent is always invalid. It's never, ever a good example of an inference. It's a bad inference and will always be a bad inference. We'll now do some textbook problems. They're pretty straightforward. This is exercise 3A from page 172. We'll do three problems here. We're to construct the conditional corresponding to each of the following arguments. Number one, we're to prove R, given these two premises. Let's just think about this argument first and figure out if it's valid. We're given not Q, and this denies the consequent to a conditional, which thereby allows us to deny the antecedent to get R, so it is valid. Now we'll write the tautological implication. So the antecedent, put that in brackets, we want to combine our premises, not Q, and parentheses, not R, implies Q, close parentheses, close bracket, implies R. So we have R, our conclusion, as the consequent, and the antecedent, we combine our two premises through a conjunction. In number two, we want to prove not parentheses P and not Q, close parentheses, given this premise. Let's think about this. Is this a valid argument? Let's do De Morgan's rule on the conclusion so we can get not P or not not Q, which is the same thing as Q. It is valid because with a mixed hypothetical syllogism, there's only two valid types of arguments, namely modus ponens and modus tollens. 
modus ponens would get us Q, modus tollens would get us not P. So those are the only two possibilities. Otherwise, we'll have something that's fallacious. So it's valid. So in parentheses, I'll put if P then Q as the antecedent to our bigger conditional, not parentheses, P and not Q. And of course, the consequent is the conclusion. The antecedent is the premise. Number four, let's do D. Morgan's rule again, just to make sure we're clear on what's being asked here. So we'll say not A and not B. We're given C. We can simplify that just to get C. And this kicks in this not A by modus ponens. Likewise, we have this not D. We have this disjunction. D is being denied, so we can get not B from that. So we can arrive at that. So it's a valid argument. Okay. So I have a big bracket for antecedent. We're going to combine our premises, C and not D. That in parentheses and C, then not A and D or not B. So that's the antecedent. And now we'll have the conclusion, not parentheses A or B, close parentheses. For exercise 3B, we're just moving in the opposite direction. We're given the tautological implication, and we want to reconstruct the argument. Number one, we have a conditional. Of course, Q is the consequence, so it's the conclusion. And here we have our antecedent. We have two premises, and they're separated by the and sentential connective. So we want to prove Q with the first premise P and the second premise Q or not P. With number three, we're given a very large sentence. Here is our dominant sentential connective, the if-then. So here is the consequent. That's a conclusion. So we want to prove if S, then Q, and not T. Our first premise would be if Q, then T, or R. Second premise, not S. Third premise, if R or T, then S. There's one more part to this section, tautological equivalence. Now, two sentences are equivalent if and only if they always have the same truth conditions. For example, consider De Morgan's law. This left-hand side, not X or not Y, is logically equivalent to the right-hand side, not parentheses X and Y, close parentheses. How do we know that? Well, we can do a truth table, of course. So, if we compare our results from our first sentence here and our second sentence here, we see they have the same exact truth values, so they're equivalent. By the way, an equivalency is the same as a biconditional. Thus, we can write that as a biconditional. In that case, what would we get? Tautology. So for simplicity's sake, let's say this sentence here not x or not y is sentence one. And this sentence here, not parentheses x and y, close parentheses is sentence two. So if we say one, if and only if two, we would get all true values. It's a tautology. Before I conclude this video, I wanna cover a couple of items that are not actually in the textbook. This deals with the relations between sentences. In the last sentence, we dealt with equivalence. Now, when we compare two sentences, they can have different types of relations, and one type deals with consistency. Two sentences are consistent if it is possible that both can be true at the same time. Notice this is a very minimal definition, as you shall see. And as you would expect, if they're not consistent, they're inconsistent. So here's an example, sentence one, S, sentence two, P. Are they consistent? Just look at their truth table, they are. 
because you have a possibility that they can both be true. And remember, S and P can represent anything at all. So being consistent is a very, very minimal standard, so to speak. Moreover, S and P could have nothing to do with each other. They can be totally unrelated. Okay, so S can be concerning the subject of astrophysics. P can be about, and I don't know, biology. It doesn't matter. Um, they're just consistent insofar as it's possible that both can be true. That's all. And finally, we have one more type of relation dealing with implication. Sentence X implies sentence Y if and only if whenever sentence X is true, sentence Y is likewise true. But note, implies doesn't mean equivalent. Two sentences are only equivalent if and only if X implies Y and Y implies X. That is, both imply each other. And here is an example. There's two sentences. Here's sentence one and here is sentence two. If we do a truth table, we get this. So there are two atomic sentences, which means there are four total combinations. Here's sentence one or S1. And here is sentence two or S2. Notice that each time sentence one is true, sentence two is true. Therefore, sentence one implies sentence two. But sentence two does not imply sentence one. So here's a true value. But if you look, then sentence one is false. So sentence two does not imply sentence one. And that concludes this video. Up next is section 4.4, summary and review test. Thanks for watching.